Well, what's going on everybody? It's Thursday night, Thursday afternoon. It's 5 p.m. And uh, as always, we're gonna do our little live Dylan Talks Tone Q&A. I got some questions from uh, the folks over on Patreon and I think that's pretty awesome. So if uh, you have any questions and for some reason you can't make it to this live thing, uh, you can actually go over there and ask that stuff and then I will feature those questions on the, the live thing today. We'll try to fit more in if we can, but we've got a lot to talk about. We've got a couple of really cool things uh, going on. I just actually uploaded a video that's coming out tomorrow. I don't normally upload videos on Friday, but you know, we have more time. We've got more time. We're doing stuff because we're staying home. So I figured I'd shoot an extra video and it's really cool. So we'll talk about that uh, as we continue uh, this afternoon. So as we go today also, I, I figured this is kind of cool. It's been working out. It worked out last week. We're going to work on a project as we answer your questions. This is the fence post telly the piece of pine that we aged to look like the old fence post from my yard. Remember if we did, if you remember that video? Um, well, I sold this guitar. So, and I had taken it apart for some of those videos that you've seen. And so I got to put it all back together. So I'm throwing a set of pickups in it today, rewiring it all up with regular tele wiring. Because remember we did uh, on some of our other videos, you'll recall that we did a bunch of stuff where we switched around, um, you know, wiring, schemes and that sort of stuff so we're putting it back to a normal telly uh and then the customer can come and pick it up uh so that's that's one thing we got going and then we got a couple other cool things going too uh not related to this video but related to the one tomorrow the one tomorrow is really really cool i recommend that you definitely check it out um so let's jump right into some questions that we got from our patreon viewers and uh i think you're gonna dig it uh let's see if you were building a Jazzmaster type guitar, would you choose P90s over the Jazzmaster style pickup? <clears throat> uh, that's an easy one for me personally because I probably would choose P90s over just about any kind of pickup because they're my favorite. Now, that being said, um, I love Jazzmasters. So I don't know that I would necessarily choose a Jazzmaster um, you know, like, like chop up a jazz master or, you know, that sort of thing to get rid of them. Um, so for those of you that may not be familiar, a lot of people, uh, really confuse jazz masters, jazz master pickups MP nineties. We have a pretty good video about it a couple months ago. Uh, that's all about the difference between those pickups because they're massively different. They're like not even close to even being the same. Uh, but a lot of people confuse them. So um, that's why that question came up over on Patreon. That being said, they really are my favorite. Put the crossover wire on this here tele switch. And clip it off. Bam. And then basically all we have to do, I think, here now is hook up the pickups, which for some reason I made these pickup leads really, really short. I don't know why that is. So we will hook up some pickup leads. Boom, there's one. And this is going to be a ground, which will come over to the pot. Somebody last week said, I really like to see you solder because it looks so easy. And honestly, it's just because of the heat. Just use more heat. If you want to solder more quickly and more effectively, use more heat. And get good contact uh, between the iron and whatever you're soldering. So don't uh, that is so here's another little tip too and we're going to talk about the actual tip use a screwdriver tip don't use a, a pointed tip because 
you get more heat transfer with a screwdriver tip that way. All right, next question. Uh, related thought. Let's see. Oh, okay. So we're talking about um, our lace sensor video last week. Now, that was a really interesting video because a lot of people really like those things. Um, I'm not a huge fan, but a lot of people really do like them. And I can understand why, because they're quiet. They, they work well, you know. Um, you said these don't sound like traditional single coils. Would the frequency response tone be compared to anything else? Jazzmaster, gold foils, or anything like that? No, they sound exactly like a single coil. They just lack um, a little bit of... Honestly, it's just the top end response. In, in my opinion, it's the top end response or the lack of it that I don't like. Um, that's the thing about lace sensors that I don't like. Screw the bridge down. I did put a string ground in here already. And for those of you that are going to freak out about me using a power tool, if I didn't use a power tool, I'd never get anything done. I'm too busy for that 1800s nonsense. That being said, I don't tighten anything down with a power tool. So none of those screws are tight. Like this thing is still wiggly. Then we come back over here with a hand screwdriver and give it a little tighten up. Of course, this is a pine body, so you would want to be especially careful with that. And now the bridge pickup is installed. And our next question. A thought's been bugging me forever. How come in this golden age of tone, where are the likes of Kempers, Pro Tools, guitar rigs, eye rigs, amplitudes, and so forth, you can easily model pretty much any amp or pedal or cabinet and effect rack on your computer. Pickups still matter so much. So he's asking why do pickups matter so much in 2020 or the 2020s? Um, and they're less modeled and emulated than any other thing, often much more complex elements of the signal chain. So <clears throat> this is a question that I always ask because I'm constantly asking people why we spend so much time nerding out about this stuff in general when really this tone stuff is really super simple you just have a coil and a capacitor and a couple of resistors and a cable and your amp that's really all there is it is a simple lc circuit everybody overthinks it way too much and you know, that's why we don't have like nine different models of Telecaster pickups and 10 different models of humbuckers. The humbuckers that we have, we literally have three different models and they do a broad spectrum of things. Um, very low output, higher output, but splits well, and even higher output, but splits well. Um, I've always been on the design side of pickups, pretty simplistic, basically solving basic problems, right? Um, and then having a good baseline tone to build everything else on. I have always felt that if your guitar just makes good, solid sound, don't overthink it. Just like put pickups in it, like these right here. These are just basically a modified version of some 60s tele pickups only made with modern materials and stuff because all this mojo and garbage that everybody puts into everything, it doesn't much matter. I think people do overthink all of that. So just keep it super simple, have one good set of pickups, and then make sure everything's clean and then mechanically make sure your guitar works well. Make sure the nut is good, make sure the saddles are good, make sure you don't lose any energy in any other in intended purpose other than just playing the thing. And then you're not overthinking it. Um, now, that being said, I think there's a lot of things that can be done. Um, we're gonna get into Fishman Fluence in a couple of weeks. Um, we're gonna 
and we're, you know we talked about lace sensors there's a lot of different ways to do stuff but the problem is is that guitar players are such a slave to tradition that they don't want to experiment i think there would be a lot more stuff out there cool stuff pickup wise if guitar players would be like anybody else in the entire world and just allow technology to to advance that's honestly what it really comes down to uh the next question is what is a charlie christian pickup and how does it differ from early single coils okay this is a totally different thing um i do not want to answer this question right now because i will just tell you i don't 100 percent have all of the facts around them um I know about them. They're very low output. They have big magnets. They have a big steel plate underneath them. They're a weird construction and they don't just fit in any guitar. Now th that's the real ones. Um, there are some knockoff like imitation ones. Um, but uh, that is not the real ones. And so when I I need to get a hold of one is what I need to do so that I can be 100% educated on them enough to give you a good answer. Uh, I think I just grabbed the wrong spot. Here we go. On this solder roll. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and solder in real quick the got the windows open and for some reason the way the air is moving today is like blowing the solder smoke right in my face uh next question metal pick guards do they work in reducing hum yeah they're a big shield um for sure they're a big shield does it have any effect on the tone or the sustain will it make single coils quiet with an overdriven amp does it have any effect on the humbuckers and does the type of metal matter? Um, there are different types of metal that are more or less effective. Uh, I have used, I, I've talked about it before, we've done aluminum top guitars that were really, really quiet. Um, I don't think it really matters. Um, aluminum, copper obviously is going to be the best. It looks cool when it ages too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's probably, those are probably the two most popular and both of those would probably do uh, very well. Is it gonna affect the tone of the guitar? No, nope, not really. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna uh, dispute that, talking about eddy currents and that sort of thing. Um, but the bottom line is pickups are, the magnets are too weak to produce tons of eddy currents. Um, for as far apart as everything is in a guitar. Let me explain that in just a second. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it will make pickups quieter. Um, humbuckers less so because they're humbuckers and they have less hum anyway. All right, so let's take a look at a Telecaster. For example, one of the reasons that people, or one of the myths that people want to hold on to for some reason is they think that this metal plate being around this pickup right here has a huge effect on the tone of this pickup because of eddy current. It just doesn't. It's completely a myth, and here's why. Because the strength of this pickup, the strength of these magnets, um, okay, first of all, eddy currents start because a magnetic pole being completely perpendicular to a flat metal surface. It does not have to be ferrous. It can be aluminum. Completely perpendicular to it will cause eddy currents, it looks kind of like a figure eight almost, happening in the flat surface of the metal. Those can then come back into the coil and make interference with the inductance that's happening in the coil. But that's not what we have here. We do not have that with the Telecaster pickup because the Telecaster pickup is not sitting on top of a big metal plate. Well, it is, but not this one. This one doesn't have anything to do with it. And the distance from here to here is genuinely enough difference for that eddy current not to matter. Literally, if we take this screwdriver and we say that this was a pole magnet and we lift it a quarter of an inch off the top, there's no longer, if this was a magnet 
and we lifted it a quarter inch away or even an eighth of an inch away, there would no longer be any eddy currents that would be any major effect on anything going on in that magnetic field. Because these magnets are so small, it absolutely, the fall off, um, what's it called? It's, well, the technical term is the magnetic dipole moment, but um, the, the strength of the magnetic field falls off exponentially as it moves away. Um, you know, like from here to here is like a quarter and from here to here is like a 32nd. I mean, and I only moved my finger like a 16th of an inch. Like it's ridiculous um, how little of difference it makes. That's also why the whole string pull over the neck pickup thing is a complete farce too, because when you adjust this correctly, anyway, th there's a whole, we need to do another video about that. Um, this is a really good question that came in actually, this actually came in, um, in a comment on a YouTube video, but I wanted to address it because it's very interesting. Shouldn't, so he was talking about thickness of finish. Okay. So thickness of the finish, uh, on a guitar having an effect on the tone. And we've talked about this many times. Again, it's another myth. Yes, it vibrates less in your lap that doesn't necessarily mean that the guitar sounds any different. It just feels different when it vibrates in your lap. And those are not the same thing. And there is science to go with that. I got a video coming about it one of these days. Okay. <clears throat> Shouldn't the thickness of the finish be even regardless of where it is measured on the guitar if you have done a good job wet sanding and leveling the edges and everything? The answer is no. Because... And I have lots of experience with this because automotive finishes uh, is something I have tons of experience with um, because of surface tension. So if you take a let, if you, if this guitar right here is a hundred percent level and we spray uh, a liquid on top of it, okay, just because of the way surface tension works, just the way molecules move, it's going to be thinner in the middle right here. Okay. And then what's going to happen is is it's gonna get it's gonna get thin, 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 and then it's gonna get like thick on the very edge, and then it's gonna fall off and get super thin right here. So it's gonna get super thick, like about mm, yay far from the edge, because of the way surface tension works. So then when you're color sanding and buffing a guitar, you can get the this flat part of the finish pretty thin. But if you get close to the edge and you burn through, then you have to completely do the whole thing over again. So you end up with usually a little bit thicker spot around all these edges. And so when people say, oh, this thin finish is so thick on this guitar, it's ruining the tone. Most of the time it's because they've seen it chip off like right here or like right here, or like right here. And that is where the finish is the thickest. And that is not a good representation of how thick the finish is on the rest of the guitar. Now I know that there are some like mid to late eighties Fender products, for example, that have really thick urethane finishes on them. That is because during that time period, um, there, there, the environmental stuff was going on big time and paint technology hadn't caught up to it. So they were trying to um, lower the amount of solids, VOCs, the solids in paints so that when you sprayed paint, there wasn't like solids and pollutants going everywhere. Okay. Um, so they were trying to lower that. And so, but it wasn't working very well. And so they were ending up with paint that fell off cars. Remember like, um, in the late eighties and the mid eighties, all those Chevy trucks and the white paint would just flake off and it would be gray underneath. That's cause they were trying to lower the particulates in the paint and then they did it wrong and it fell off. Um, same thing with guitar finishes. They like basically got thicker instead of getting thinner. Now it's 2020 and they're really good at it and finishes are super thin and they can pretty much do whatever they want and it works. Um, but that, you know, that's because 
30 years has gone by and now we're better at everything. So you don't have to worry about finishes on a guitar as much. I know that people want to, but it's really not that big a deal. Um, so, oh, okay. So before we get, I'm going to go through the feed now and I'm going to see if we can get some questions out of there. Um, but before I do that, tomorrow's video that comes out is really cool. You saw the thumbnail of this video and it is a 2020 broadcaster 70th anniversary reissue. Uh, I have that guitar right over there. It's really, really cool. So um, that guitar belonged to the Troglis Guitar Show. So if you go back and you watch the Troglis Guitar Show, uh, he's, he did like a review of it and took it all apart and showed everything in it. But what he didn't do was he didn't do the mods. He didn't modify it from the regular tele switching to the broadcaster blend circuit. He's like, I don't want to do it. It's too complicated. If you watch his video, it's awesome. It's an awesome video. Um, but he's like, I don't want to mess with that part. Well, then he sold it to a friend of mine. I didn't know this. I was just visiting my friend in Florida and he's like, Hey, I just bought this guitar from Trogley's guitar show. Do you want to take it and do the broadcaster circuit in it and do a video about it? So he, he lent me that guitar. So I shot that video over the last couple days and I uploaded it a few minutes ago. So tomorrow morning, that video will come out at eight o'clock. It's really, really neat. It's a neat guitar, man. And it's a, just a really cool idea. Um, the other thing, we've got a few things, cool things going. Um, the other thing that's going is I got the Fishman Fluence pickups. Um, I am going to start working on that video, I think, next week. Uh, if you have ordered, that's the other thing I want to mention today, too. If you have ordered Lizard Spit stuff, um, it's coming. It is coming to me. I'm out right now, and it's coming to me. And the reason is, and hopefully people stay patient with this because what's really happening is, I'm pretty sure, is that uh, Mr. Lizard Spit is diverting some of his efforts to making um, like disinfectant stuff because he makes cleaning stuff for a living from natural ingredients. And so I think he's diverting some of his efforts towards like disinfectant stuff having to do with this coronavirus stuff. And so I think... He told me last week, he's like, it's going to be over a week before I get to shipping your stuff. So I think he shipped it to me a couple of days ago. So if you've ordered that stuff and you're still waiting on it, that's why. So please be patient with me. I'm, su I'm super stoked that he's doing that and it doesn't hurt my feelings at all, but I just want to let you all know that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So... Yeah, Trogli is a good dude. You know, I've only talked to him a couple times just in a message. Uh, can you make a Tele rear pickup, but in a PAF physical form? I mean, I guess you could make a humbucker with a steel base plate, but it wouldn't sound like, wouldn't sound like that. Uh, let's see. What's the deal with my friend saying traditional tele control plate layout gets on a lot of people's nerves? I think that's because when people are playing it, they feel like they hit the switch. So they flip it around and make this the volume, this the tone, and this the switch. I don't like it reversed. I can't stand it. It drives me nuts. Um, but that's just me. That's just an opinion. Uh, let's see. Slug screw humbuckers versus double slug or double screw. Um, this is another one where I think people put way too much effort and thought into that. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, you have to remember, uh, the original Seth Lover design did not have screws. It had two rows of slugs. And the only reason it got screws is was to satisfy the Gibson marketing department. We have a whole video on this. Um, and people don't want to believe me, but I can show you the patent drawings. I mean, it's not that hard. Um, it doesn't have that much, that big of a difference at all. Uh, let's see. Yeah, people hit the switch a lot, which I don't understand either, but 
um, GNL. Yeah, I want to do some GNL stuff. I just don't have them. So on some of this stuff, basically what I'm doing, if you want to expedite this process, uh, again, go over to patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone and help us out over there because I'm using that money to buy the stuff and then I'm just giving it to you. So we're going to have a bunch of more giveaways uh, coming up because I've got a bunch of stuff piling up around here. Um, I'd like to do a treble bleed on my volume pot. What value and type of cap should I start with? Um, I do not have those numbers off the top of my head. I don't do them myself. We used to sell them, but I can't remember. I used to make them, but I can't remember what they are because it's been so long. Um, and I don't really like them or use them, so I, it's not something I've committed to memory. That's something you can Google, though, uh, and it's pretty fast uh, to find. Will you do a video dissecting an active pickup? Uh, yes, that is coming. Uh, da, 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 da. I did not do EMGs yet, but they are coming. That is for sure. Um, GNL MDFs, that is coming also. Again, uh, as I have funds come available on um, Patreon, then we buy that stuff and do it. So that's what I am trying to do. Are you working on a refinished video for the Squire Telly? Oh, man. So um, I want to do a finished video, but I don't have the circumstances to do it at this time. Uh, that might be something that I could do in the next few months, uh, but I am not sure. Yeah, I get a lot of requests on these GNL MFDs. We're going to have to do them. We're going to have to do this. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. And let's see. Trouble bleed mod. Nope. We are okay. We already talked about that. Um, our lipstick pickups really different from other pickups. I did a video on that just a couple months ago. You can see that one. Um, what is resist do, putting resistors on a volume pot actually do? If you put a resistor in the line with a volume pot, it just turns the volume down. Um, what is the lowest output humbuckers you make? Um, I'll make them as low as you want, man. You shoot me a message and I'll make them as low as you want. I'll put three wines on there and they won't even work if you want. doesn't matter. We'll do whatever. Yeah. Um, the PAF style um, pickup that we make, the Dylan Pickups DAF, is 7.2. Um, took your advice on the cereal box gym. It worked great. For real, man. Somebody said, don't bring your elbow. It's really close to the soldering iron. It is, but I turned it off when I finished working on the guitar. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Graph Tech locking ratio or Grover mini locking rotomatics. Um, I'm not a Grover fan, only because I think they're kind of ugly. Um, but they're really good. Those are both very good choices. Uh, the Graph Tech locking ratio ones are really cool. What he's talking about there is on your guitar, because your string is thicker here, you know, you have the, the string is much thicker right here and it's thinner down here, right? So when you turn this, let's say a half a turn, it turns, well, these are 19 to one. So, um, so every 19 degrees that the tuner moves up here, this moves one degree. The, these particular tuners are 19 to one. But the, what the ratio ones do, because the, because the, string is thicker here and thinner here it's not 19 to 1 on on this string and this string the the ratio changes because of the thickness of the string and so those grav tech things are really cool because they actually adjust the ratio as you go down really really cool very cool we have stuff coming what is that We just got a shipment from UPS. If it's guitar related, I'm gonna open it right now. Um, 
What are some of the lightest weight tuners you've tried? Um, you know, I don't experiment with that a whole lot, but uh, the Klusen, um, the Klusen stamped steel stuff is pretty light. Have you seen the Wilkinson guitar kits on Sumac? I have not. I have heard of them, but I have not. Uh, let's see. Cool. I got to see what this stuff is. Hang on. <clears throat> okay. I really don't know what this is. Oh my goodness. I do know what this is. Okay, this is guitar related and we're gonna do a video about this and this is really cool. This is really cool technology in this box. I'm so glad that you all were here. We're gonna do an unboxing. I don't normally do unboxing stuff, but since you're here and it walked in the door right then, uh, this company um, texted me or emailed me or Facebook messaged me or something like a month ago. And they were like, hey, um, we want you to try our product and tell us what you think of it. And here it is. I don't even know how it works. Okay. <laughs> it is called the mud stand. And what it is, is it's an amp stand. Here, let's put it together. It's literally just foam. Sorry, I'm probably making all kinds of microphone noise in your ear. I apologize. But it literally fits together like that. And it's literally just foam. It's literally closed cell foam that's just put together like this. Okay? So now you put your amp on here. See how that would work? Like it would sit like this. And then you would put your amp on there and it would tilt your amp back, right? put it up there on the table on the counter so see see how that would work and you would put your amp on there well the idea behind it the technology behind it, it's it sounds stupid but i think they're on to something in that the idea behind it is if you play on one stage and you set up your eq and your amp your and you stand in front of your amp and you're playing it sounds a certain way then you go to the next gig and you're playing on a concrete floor and it sounds totally different. So the idea is, is to isolate the amp from the floor in such a way, almost like you do with studio monitors. So you, you put your studio monitors on these like foam things and it isolates your studio monitor from your desk or your table or whatever. So you don't get um, that wacky, some of that wacky resonance that happens and it'll tighten up and make your sound more consistent from venue to venue. I think it is a fantastic idea. It sounds stupid because it's just pieces of foam, but they, they contacted me and they're like, hey, do you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, I think I want to check that out. So there it is, they, they sent me that. It's really neat. Um, I mean, I'm not even saying that it's gonna be worth a thing. You guys want to do another live unboxing? Um, yeah, let's do it. You know what? This is what we should do. When we do these videos, this is a great idea. I hate leaving the camera when I'm doing live stuff, but we're only at uh, 33 minutes. Usually I go like 40, 45. Um, so I got a couple more minutes and I have not unboxed the Fishman Fluence modern pickups yet. They're in the box still sitting right over there. So if you would like me to, uh, we could do that. Um, I'll answer a couple of questions. Light and easy, no transfer of vibration. Sounds absolutely reasonable. Tone foam, exactly. And it looks like it wouldn't get damaged in shipping. Exactly. Um, you know, super cool. How long would they last if you're a violent punk rocker? See, that's one question I have. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, re it's a really neat idea. Um, so stoked on my guitar giveaway you sent me. Oh, dude, I'm glad you got it. Okay, so um, I'm not going to... So Brian there just messaged me, um, messaged in the thing. He's the one that won the guitar maintenance kit. 
somebody else actually originally won it, but then they never got in touch with me. Um, so they never got it. So I gave it to him instead. Hang on, let me grab those Fishman Fluences if you want me to do it, I'll do it right now. In fact, I have a wireless microphone on, so it's not like I have to leave uh, while we're doing this. All right, <clears throat> so here they are. Fishman Fluent Moderns. So, first of all, we're gonna look at the stuff in the box. Um, we'll, talk, we'll look at the pickups in a minute because they're very interesting, but we'll save that's the best for last. We got some papers. We always have papers. And the packaging is very, very nice. So we've got two push-pull pots. Let me see what kind they are. I haven't even looked at this stuff, you guys. I literally, it's been sitting in a box over there for like the last week. Um, and I haven't even messed with it. These are, can't tell if these are alphas or if they're bones. Not really sure. So they're, they're a regular analog push-pull pot. So the interesting thing about fluences are that they don't call them active pickups. So we've got two, uh, two not push-pulls and two push-pulls, okay? They don't call them active pickups. They call them powered pickups, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, when we're talking about these. And I, I don't know what that means yet. The reason I've not done this video yet is because I am going to some pretty great lengths and hopefully kind of beyond where anybody else has ever gone on YouTube about Fishman's. Every, every Fishman video I watch on YouTube and every article I watch about it is like, these are the newest, greatest thing and they're these circuit board printed blah 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 and they're supposed to be able to do this and that. And it's all the same and nobody has any real information. And so the reason I've, I'm not saying I've put this off, because I don't mean I've put it off as far as like I don't want to do it. I just, one of the things I'm really passionate about at Dylan Talks to Tone in general is that when we do stuff, I want it to be right. And I don't mind being wrong. I've been wrong before, but I'm going to do my best to make sure that the information is accurate. And even if I'm wrong, I want to not ever intentionally like propagate false information or marketing fluff for the purpose of marketing fluff, if that makes sense. Um, and I know that's why I don't have a million subscribers because I don't do that stuff that other people do that just make marketing claims. Okay, so we have two caps in here. They're the brown chiclet ones and they are 22s. So that's just, it's just some screws and some stuff in here. And the little brown chiclet caps, uh, a three pole for active pickups power or uh, what you call it, uh, output jack. We got a doodad for um, nine volt battery. And then we've got the solderless pin connector doodads for hooking up the pickups. Um, all right, so let's look at the business. I have a Schecter C1 with a Floyd Rose on it that we used in the Floyd Rose video about a week ago or two weeks ago. And those are what I'm going to use. That's what I'm going to use for this, this video series. And I have a surprise with this video coming that I'm not going to tell you about. Uh, and then when we get done, I'm giving away these pickups to somebody. Uh, we will do the same thing, probably on a live. We'll probably rip them apart. I'm not going to rip them apart because I want to give them away. They cost real money. These were expen these are 200 bucks. <laughs> um, these are expensive, 239 or something. So, um, and we used Patreon money to buy them. And so I want to make sure that I give them back to you. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked me, by the way, before I show you the cool part of these pickups, somebody asked me the other day, is there any way that since Patreon viewers um, help out with this stuff if that I can give them an advantage to win stuff. 
Um, the answer is no, because that's illegal. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm working on a way to be able to give every one of you that helps out on Patreon a little thank you. And it's going to be like individual, personal to each person. I'm not even joking. It's going to be a ton of work and it's going to cost me a few bucks, but I appreciate it so much that I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make it up to you. That's I'm working on it. Okay. Um, so on the back of these here, I'm going to hold one up for you to look at. We'll see if we can get this to focus a little bit. All right. So I'm going to look at one. Well, well I'm going to try. So it has a uh, ground something gain ground hf tilt ground voice two output ground and nine to 18 volts you could run these at 18 volts holy crap we're gonna have to try that so this is a modern ceramic and this is a modern el nico so they're actually two different pickups so your bridge versus your neck pickup are different um so there you go First, first live unboxing on Dylan Talks Tone. I don't, I've never done that. And maybe, maybe we should do that more. That'd be pretty awesome. You guys, this has been super fun. Uh, thanks for hanging out today. Let me just come through here real fast uh, and make sure. And make sure blah, 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 blah. unbox the fluence rip them apart yeah we're gonna give away a bunch of stuff i actually have a bunch of stuff up my sleeve right now that i've not told you about uh because i live in a motorhome and i can't fit all this stuff so and right now because of covid19 i'm staying in my in-laws driveway um which means that I have water hookup and an electric hookup, but no sewer hookup. So that means that every five days or so, five or six days, I have to go to a, a rest area that's like a few miles from here and dump my tanks, which means I have to move every five or six days, which means I have to pack up every five or six days, which means all this stuff that I've got laying around, guitar stuff and everything, all has to be put up. So I do not like having a ton of this extra stuff laying around, which means that I'm going to give it to you. So I have more than you know getting ready for various giveaways and stuff. And we are approaching 35,000 subscribers. And I told you that when we hit 35,000, that we would start talking about the giveaway at 40,000. I already bought it, and I have not told you what it is. Nobody knows. But it's cool. And you might be one of the first of any of your friends that has it. That's all I'm going to say. It's very cool. But we have to get to 40000 so we can give it away. So that's coming. Okay? Um, yeah, man. Super cool. Super cool. Uh, why are you not at home? I don't have a home. We sold our house. Um, you need to follow our Music and Mascara YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash music mascara. In fact, here, I'm just going to write this right in here. You all need to follow this channel. Um, if you want to know what's going on and why, um, people are like, why are you shooting videos from your camper? I'm like, it's not a camper, first of all. Music mascara. Here you go. Go follow that YouTube channel. Um, that will give you the whole story. Uh, we sold our house. We bought a motorhome, and we're living the dream, man. Super cool. Super cool stuff. Uh, I am at home. That's exactly right. You guys, thanks for hanging out. This has been super fun. This has been a fun one, man. I dig it. We got a guitar ready to go. I just got to throw some strings on it and check the setup. Uh, so that customer will be super happy with that thing. And we'll get that out of here video tomorrow. Make sure you check it out. Uh, and then I'll give you a little teaser. Monday's video is going to be um, about pickups again, like a comparison thing. So thanks for hanging out.
We'll see y'all. It's been awesome. I appreciate everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.